Welcome back to the studio, everybody. This is Bobby. On deck today, I've got this quarter scale green lantern statue from CA Studios. Probably one of my most favorite characters. I'm uh, very excited about this project. I've got all my parts ready to go, so let's not waste any time and uh, get right into it. So by now you know the drill. I got these parts printed and washed and cured and sorted into a bucket and ready to go. My first step was to get the base assembled. I had to cut the front end off the base uh, to make it fit in my printer. So um, there is a, a non-manufacturer standard cut line that I have to deal with. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Just got all the parts kind of sanded down and the flat edges uh, sanded so that I could uh, just kind of glue the, the front end on as best I could. There was a little bit of a gap there. There was some warping uh, from the print and uh, I'm gonna get that patched up with some uh, putty in just a few minutes. And so with every project I inevitably learn something and uh, with this project I learned that uh, anytime you want to have any sort of transparent resin parts it's best to just print them fully solid. Uh, instead of hollow. Um, you really just can't get the same effect um, when you hollow them out and then you can have to go in there with uh, you know any tools or things that you have to fish out the uh, supports because uh, you can't see them you know through the transparency. So it's really just not worth it's not worth the effort to print hollow um, transparent pieces. And uh, yeah I know that now. After sanding down the rest of the parts and giving them a test fit, it was time to get the transparent pieces ready for tinting. During the post process, transparent pieces tend to get a little hazy. Here's a quick tip on how to bring back the clarity. So what you're going to need is a bottle of clear resin, a brush with a towel, or something you can throw away, something to keep clean, uh, your trusty UV goggles because uh, we're not dummies, and a UV torch. So the idea here is to apply a very thin layer of the uh, clear resin to the piece. Um, ideally the whole piece uh, if possible um, or, or sections of the piece that are um, kind of whole so that you don't end up with divisions. If you kind of subdivide the uh, application then you end up with uh, kind of unevenness uh, in, in the layer. So um, yeah, like I said it's best to, to do the whole piece if you can. Um, and then you want to give it a few seconds uh, before you start curing to uh, let the coat sort of settle uh, into one nice even layer. Once applied, you give it a quick few second cure with the hand torch and uh, then you can put it back in your cure station for uh, a couple minutes. Um, I, I recommend not doing more than like two minutes because uh, the resin will start to yellow. Uh, the transparency will start to yellow if you, you over cure it too much. So a couple minutes in the cure box and uh, it's, it's good to go. I have two alcohol inks that I want to test on this misprinted transparent piece here. I also want to test the pearlized green on the black and the white primers. So let's do some spoon testing. Um, if you don't spoon test, I, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a real quick and easy way to test colors before you uh, apply them to your model. Um, especially when you need to test variables like uh, this pearlized green on the black primer versus the uh, pearlized green on the white primer. Um, it is a pretty significant difference and um, I'm glad that I did this test because it kind of informed me on uh, how the uh, pearlized paint was going to look um, you know, on the, on the different foundations. And now to test the inks. I have a lime green alcohol ink and a grass green alcohol ink. Um, so I started with the lime green. Uh, it is just not right. It's way too blue. Uh, the grass green, however, is uh, perfect. So that's what I'm going to go with. I applied the grass green alcohol ink to all the transparent pieces and then gave them a coat with the uh, Vallejo Premium Gloss Varnish. Just kind of seal it all in and keep it nice and shiny. Once I had the transparent parts sealed, I could move on to the prepping and priming 
of the remaining pieces. Speaking of priming, I, I needed to prime his uh, right hand. It was a, a mix of the Green Lantern transparency and uh, his gloves. So uh, I needed to go in there with a, a, a brush and kind of prime around the, uh, the energy uh, flowing around his, his fingers and hands. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this, this took me a minute. To the parts of the suit that are the green metallic space armory bits, I applied uh, a white primer to accentuate the geometry and to set in the shadows and highlights. So now it's time for this Createx pearlized green uh, to be applied over the uh, green armory bits of the, the model. Um, from the spoon test, I knew that the, there was quite a bit of variance between the, the white and the black uh, primers, so using that to my advantage, um, I was happy to see the highlights and shadows uh, on the uh, models really kind of stand out with the green metallic uh, or the, the green pearl applied. Uh, I was really happy with the, the final output. For the black parts of the suit, I didn't want them to be totally, totally black because uh, then you can't really add any shadows or anything and add any definition. So I base coated the, uh, the black parts with a dark blue gray from Vallejo um, and that will act as kind of the high spots on the, uh, the models. I'm going to go back in with the black wash later and uh, you know the lowest parts and kind of uh, apply some shadows to uh, bring some definition back into uh, the, the leg muscles and stuff. Going to work on the rocks now. I gave them a, a heavy dry brush of a Vallejo London Gray. And once that was dry, I went in with an airbrush and added some sepia wash and a little bit of blue wash uh, to the rocks. Kind of give them a little bit of variance uh, in, uh, in their color so they're not just a uh, one flat gray kind of color. And finally, back at the paint desk, I applied a bit of a deck tan uh, with a dry brush, uh, just to the highest spots in the rock, uh, just to kind of bring them back to life. So I'm gonna use some of this cold white here from uh, Vallejo down in uh, the, uh, the kind of crevices in uh, the rock looks like there's some fractures here where there's some uh, some energy kind of coming out so uh, I'm gonna use the cold white and uh, uh, in these little in these fissures to uh, kind of set the tone for a uh, technical color called Tesseract Glow um, from Citadel uh, and uh, that's gonna give kind of the uh, a little bit of a glowy kind of OSL effect uh, on the base. So now I'm going to go in here with the uh, same cold white uh, with the airbrush and just kind of give a, a softened kind of glow to the, uh, to the fissures in the rocks. And the final step is applying the Tesseract Glow from Citadel. With the base basically completed. Uh, I wanted to see how it looked with the uh, green energy bits and uh, a little a little mid-project confidence booster. And uh, man, that, that looks good. Back to work on the character parts. I'm base coating the cowl with a gloss black from uh, Vallejo. And that way I can uh, spray it with the uh, pearlized green. And uh, it, it has the same look as the uh, the rest of the costume uh, with the metallic green, but just a slight variance just to kind of make it uh, stand out a little bit. Then I base coated the remaining parts of the suit with the uh, dark blue gray before going back to the airbrush with some black wash and uh, washing in the, the shadows, the lower spots of the, the geometry uh, to kind of let the blue-gray act as the highlights on uh, the, uh, the, the highest parts of the model. 
I also applied the wash to uh, some of the, the green metallic parts of the suit as well, uh, just to kind of further push those shadows a little bit darker. While that was drying, I base coated the gloves with uh, deck tan before doing a dry brush with the cold white. Next, I masked off the torso with a bit of Plastitac and a plastic wrap. And uh, this is the this is the way to go, by the way, for for masking combos. You get a nice clean line with the Plastitac, and then the uh, the plastic wrap just sticks right to it, and that seals it right up. And it's uh, the best technique I found for masking. And uh, anyway, once I had the logo all masked up, I applied uh, cold white, and then uh, on the lantern. I gave it a base coat of the pearlized uh, green uh, after a, uh, a white priming. Um, I wanted the uh, lantern and the uh, ring uh, and his chest to kind of have the same kind of bright white uh, you know, metallic look. While all that was drying, I went back to the base. Uh, to get the uh, little suspended rocks and stuff that's uh, in the, the green energy. Uh, first giving those a, a black prime, and then a linen gray dry brush, and then a deck tan dry brush. After sealing in all the goodness with uh, varnish, it was time to attach the lantern to the left hand. I used a bit of super glue and uh, some resin to uh, resin weld the, uh, the pieces back together and then uh, there was a little bit of overage there so I needed to sand down the, uh, the extra resin uh, where the piece is connected. Once I was done with that I applied a white primer to the entire uh, handle on the lantern so that I could base coat it with the pearlized green. And now it's time to work on the portrait. I started with a base coat of Vallejo Brown Rose. Then I applied Army Painter Barbarian Flesh, uh, mostly from the top down, uh, to kind of set the tone uh, for the skin. While that was drying, I was looking at the lantern and decided it was kind of plain. So I added a panel liner uh, into uh, the, the recesses and kind of along the edges just to uh, help them kind of stand out a little bit so it didn't look so flat. Back to work on the portrait now. I'm starting with a uh, blue wash uh, to kind of uh, you know, give the skin a little bit of a, a tint, um, implying that there's some, uh, some blood beneath the skin uh, to help it be just a little bit more uh, of a realistic skin tone. Uh, I like the, the three-stage you know, wash kind of technique. Uh, I think it's uh, gives you some good results. It'll take a little bit of practice, but um, you just have to make sure to seal between each layer and um, just trust trust the process. So on this model, I'm going to do a, a bit of freckling on the skin uh, with this umber wash uh, from Vallejo. Um, I usually don't do freckling because uh, my main sizes that I normally print at are on one six scale and you usually can't see it. But on quarter scale, I figure, you know, you're going to see a little bit more of them close up. So um, with the airbrush turn way, way down, um, I gave him a little bit of a spritz just to give some some freckles. And then, uh, you know, anywhere there was a too heavy of a freckle, um, I just went in with a little bit of water and a, a Q-tip to... Uh, kind of remove those any extra heavy spots or any spots that I didn't like. Before applying the yellow wash I wanted to have something to contrast against so I painted the hair with a Vallejo burnt umber. And the final stage of the skin tone is to apply a bit of a yellow wash um, mainly on the highest parts of the face but uh, anywhere you want to neutralize the red. I gave the mask a coat of Vallejo Gloss Black and the lips I used a little bit of uh, brown rose and some of the red wash to uh, kind of finish off the face. 
I masked off around the mask with the uh, plastic tag and plastic wrap and uh, gave it a, a couple layers of the pearlized green. Um, the effect with the gloss black as the base was uh, really, really nice. Um, I was really happy with the, uh, the outcome. To finish off the hair, I gave it a bit of a dry brush of uh, Army Painter Fur Brown and a little bit of a bronze dry brush just on the, the highest parts and kind of the halo just to kind of give his hair a little bit of a sheen. And we're in the home stretch now. All that's left to do is to paint the whites of the eyes, add a little bit of gloss varnish to the lips and to the eyeballs. And that's it. We're, we're ready for assembly. As always, thanks for watching, and if you made it this far, you probably enjoy some of my other stuff on my channel, so make sure to check that out, and uh, hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I am live streaming my paint sessions. And until then, take it easy.